How you got picked up by Manny has always been an interesting one. An Olympian at 1920, effectively in 04, you were so young, you were the only Irish fighter at that Games. We've become spoilt in recent years and the, uh, the high performance uh, program works so well that we have come to expect it. But you were a special talent to make those Games without that architecture fully around you. Um, it was a big turning point in your life. How you qualified for the Games, and we talked about this off air a couple of weeks ago at a, an off the ball event. I wasn't fully aware of. I was amazed. I didn't understand how unlikely your qualification was given your injuries. If you, I mean, that's a perfect jumping off point in some respects. Yeah, well, it, it even goes back before then. In 2002, I went to Cuba to um, box in the World Junior Championships. In uh, Havana? Yeah, it was in Santiago. Oh, was it wasn't? Yeah, right, I kept reading Havana all day uh, today. Right beside Guantanamo. <laughs> and uh, I, I eventually won a silver medal, but along the way I beat an um, American boxer who was the number one American junior senior. He was the number one amateur boxer named Jesus Gonzalez. He was uh, trained and sponsored by Emmanuel Stewart. And um, I, I beat him in a, in a tough fight. I beat him. And Emmanuel Stewart heard about this tall, this was his words, tall, skinny white kid from, from Ireland. And he beat he Jesus and he was like, I couldn't believe it. You yeah, know? he said, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. I have to go and see him. Um, at the same time, there was a crunk Jim in Belfast, a guy named Damien Khan, who's become a very, very close friend of mine and has been with me for my whole career, helped me through all the turmoil and the stuff that I hate, the, the business side and mm. poli politics side. Um, he was in touch with Emmanuel because he was trying to get Belfast Cronk established and trying to get a, you know get the to get the the rights to use the name Cronk because he was a big fan of the Cronk gym and. Emmanuel was receptive because Emmanuel kind of liked the idea. Emmanuel always had a great affinity with the Irish people. He's his lawyer throughout his managing career and um, training career was an Irish American named um, Michael Nolan. I'm pretty right. sure. Um, and uh, so he had to see. He just thought he got a kick out of it, thinking that there was a little gym in Belfast mm. and that they were called Crunk. And so they had that contact. And um, I remember I got a call from Damien saying Emmanuel Stewart was on to me. And uh, he wants to talk to you. He wants you to go to Detroit. And I, I thought it was a wind up. You know, I thought it was. I didn't fully trust him. I didn't really know him that, yeah. that well. And was this I, before the 04 games and after 02 the in, World Championships? After, yeah. yeah. And um, then I, on Christmas Day, I got a phone call from Manuel Stewart. On Christmas Day, <laughs> um, I, I still I thought it was a wind up. <laughs> and it took me it took me three or four minutes to believe I was actually speaking to him. <laughs> And I jumped off, I got off the phone and I was beaming, I was jumping around the living room. <laughs> like, this, is a, this is a legend yeah, coming. Who, who's, who's, yeah. my, like, my parents, it was a man who was stupid. <laughs> and sure, like, I told him on the con phone call that I want to go to the Olympics, I want to mm. represent Ireland. And um, he said, well, look, go ahead and after that, we'll speak. Wow. And uh, I remember the day I was at the train, I was in the National Stadium in the train in the, in the gym. And a box arrived at the gym, and it was a box with a cronk coat, a famous cronk coat, a cronk bag, and shirts with cronk on the front and Andy Lee on the back. And I think I was the envy of the whole Irish team at that day. Sure. But um, yeah, so I went to the Olympics. How you qualified? Oh, I qual yeah. Well, it was you know I look back on those days, and I was a very determined young man, you know. And uh, I, sometimes I think it was even me who did all these these things, you know, like right. because uh, well, I've gone into the. The European Championships were doubled as a qualification. Um, it, that was in 2003. Mm. No, 2004. The it was in February. We had to go to Pula, Croatia. And um, going into it in the training camp beforehand, I was in, I had injured my left hand. I had a, um, the, fil the film that goes over your tendons had had broke. And my tendon was flipping over my knuckle any time I closed my fist. So I couldn't punch with my left hand. Too painful. Too painful, yeah. And so... I got through the training camp, but I wasn't un unable to spar. And just as a, as a point, I, I use visualization. I remember um, my training was I would go into bed because I heard Michael Crute had done that. And that he, Michael Crute was, you know, was the goal. I wanted to be an Olympic champion. Mm. And so I would lie in bed and just visualize sparring, visualize sparring. Like I would go through the whole routine, putting on my gear, wrapping my hands, warming up and do a whole workout in my head. I get to the European Championships, the first fight I'm fighting a Georgian, I beat him, but in the second round I hit him with a right hook and I get three stress fractures in my right hand. Unbeknownst to me then, but it, there was a bump immediately in my right hand, it's still there today. My math isn't very good, but that leaves you with no hands. <laughs> yeah, well, by then my left hand was I was able to punch with, but only to the body. Okay. 
um, because the body is softer. <laughs> so soft yeah. body jabs. Or, or could you really throw a proper punch to the body, or were they? No, just enough to get a point. Le- yeah. Being a southpaw, the, and the left hand is usually the scoring hand. So it was kind of the, the second fight I fought, Darren Barker, who is a great friend of mine now, who went on to become world champion yeah. himself as a professional. And I managed to beat him by fainting with my right hand and throwing the left hand to the body. <laughs> and, uh, have you told him since that after a while no, he should have realised you kept fainting? I, I haven't told him this. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't hear. Okay. But, um, and then for the third fight, I was to fight the Serbian, um, Nikolai, I can't even pronounce his surname, but he's been professional and has fought some... Some, he's fought at world level as a professional himself yeah. and for that fight I had my hand injected with um, I think it was lidocaine or bivocaine which is we got a permission from the did you get your TUE t- t- yeah, I got the TUE the doctor uh, was there okay. he, he administered the time of the doctor and I fought and I qualified I beat him on points and, and could you throw a punch with your right hand yeah, with the injection was, that was fine yeah it was fine I okay. couldn't feel it but it was fine mm. the next the next fight was against the uh, um German, but I was unable to punch with the hand, and I lost that fight. You know, and whether my hands would have been okay, I don't know whether I won or not. But he beat me on the night. But okay. by that stage, I was over the moon. I'd qualified, you qualified, and, okay. and and won a an, uh, European medal. You know, at senior level, which is huge for such a young result. guy. It, that's a strange thing to say. That sometimes I look back, and almost it feels like looking at another person. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, how the hell did I do that? I mean, even just how you got to the games at 19. Yeah. It's an amazing like, story. I remember, even like with the Cuban winning the silver medal in Cuba was like five fights in a week, and the year before I'd gone to the European Juniors and I'd lost the first fight, and I had to sit there in Sarajevo for two weeks watching boxing. You know, watching the the European Championships because they wouldn't fly us home. Right. So we had to stay there in a hotel which had bats and no hot water, and there was craters outside the front door from where the from the war and where the bombs had fallen. So. That was a character building experience anyway. A lot of thinking time. Yeah, but watching those fights and being there, it gave me, I knew what I had to be to win a, win a world medal. Mm. And, and how important was the visualization for you? I found it helped. I, I, still, I still don't, I still, I don't to do it to this day, but I was all the way up to, like, I've always, since then, and maybe even before then, I always do, like, I remember I'd be asleep and I'd be sitting on the couch and I'd be twitching or, Mm. Almost throwing punches, you know, and um, I've I've almost <laughs> had better than I've almost hit my wife a few times just out of <laughs> out of pure react. But I think, it, like I found when I went into that tournament through the visualization, I was sharper than sharp as I'd be if I'd sparred a hundred rounds just through the visualization. Wow, mm. that's amazing. And I presume something doesn't ever happen or transpire exactly as you visualize it it's just you're in yeah, a it's just, better space and you're picturing work you know you're picturing punches coming you're slipping them you're moving and it's just like someone told me that you know the subconscious mind or the mind it doesn't know the difference between mm. what's real you know what's real what's actually happened so mm. if you can put it if you can do it while well, and do it in a realistic sense then it's as good as sparring or it's as good as doing anything so you went to the Olympics, uh, you lost in the second round, I'm sure hugely disappointing, and then it, it's over to Detroit, uh, this yeah, uh, well, fresh-faced well, kid. It took a long, it took a while because at the same the same time I was getting calls from Randall Stewart, the Sports Council had offered me... Funding. Yeah, funding, and it was a very good package they put together. And um, Were you tempted? I was tempted to stay because most people advised me to stay because it was... F- it was secured funding for four years. There was, you know, there was a lot of incentives like education. I would have, you know, been able to go to school, college, and I would have been able to, would have had like, a, you know, a free car and things like that. And it was a safe road, and I could have done it and been the, the big fish in the, in the small pond, you know. And almost. another Olympics. And another Olympics and a chance to What's do What's wager? Manuel Stewart, you know, the Crank Jim, hmm. Thomas Hans. Hill, Hill McKenty, you know, all these great fighters that have been passed through those doors. Yeah. Milton McCroy, I could go on and on. Manuel Stewart trained 34 world champions. You know, that was before I, arri- I arrived. Yeah. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offering from Off the Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out. <laughs>